Welcome to the video. I guess you can call this like a new or returning player guide or what to do thing. Anyway, uh, stick around and enjoy. Consider subscribing. And if you liked the video, then hit the like button. And join my Discord. We have all sorts of fun stuff like fashion contests, giveaways, polls. No, not that kind. And more. Link in the description. You can also support me on Patreon. It seems that a lot of people who have been gone from the game for a while, like I was, have struggled a bit to get back into the game. I played the beta way back in 2012 and I stopped pretty soon after I reached level 80. And I didn't even think about the game again until I saw some random YouTube video of a guy flying on a mount and I thought that was amazing. So I decided to contact good old ArenaNet and they helped me get my account back, my original old one account. But when I first logged into the game I was completely overwhelmed with new content. All of these new places and my previously almost 100% completed map of Tyria was practically all blurred out with new zones and areas to explore. The first thing I did was Google how to get mounts and I got absolutely bombarded with tutorials and guides on how to do everything and anything and I was well, I basically froze. I didn't know what to do. The simple task of getting a mount seemed almost too much because people were showing me griffins and beetles and sky scales and all I really want is the raptor. And I know, I know, you get it right after you do the first episode of Path of Fire, but still, there was so much content, it was, it was overwhelming. And just as I was about to log off the first day, I saw this random guy looking for new guild recruits. And this takes me to the list item number one. Join a guild. I literally could not beat the first mission of Path of Fire with my trash character from 2012. And the guild I joined really helped me start back up again. It doesn't really matter what kind of person you are. If you're an introvert or an extroverted person or the most antisocial person in the world, just, just join a guild. Talk and chat and don't be afraid to ask for help. The Guild Wars 2 community is generally a really helpful bunch. If we forget about the elitist raiders. And also try to do guild missions with the guild. There are many different types. There are PvE, PvP and World vs. World missions. These tend to differ from guild to guild, as some guilds are world vs world focused and others are PvE focused. The guild officers decide what the mission type will be, and these missions change weekly. My favorite missions are bounties, treks, and puzzles, because I actually find these kind of funny to do. So yeah, join a guild. My guild mates help me stick around for the game, they explain things to me that I wasn't too sure about, and they help me fight battles that I couldn't do alone. This takes me over to item number two. Try out the different game modes and the classes. Guild Wars 2 has three distinct elements to it. Player vs environment, player vs player, and world vs world. The cool thing about Guild Wars 2 is that you don't really need to play any specific game mode. And there are not really any role specific classes. So there's generally no tank, healer, DPS kind of setup going on. And you can practically play any role with any class. The game gives you gear templates so you can quickly switch builds with the press of a button. This is super helpful if you have used one build for open world meta events and you want to jump into a quick dungeon or a raid right after. If you have just bought the expansions, you will have a level 80 booster that you can try or run all the classes with, on level 80. You will be teleported to Silver Wastes, which is a decent zone to try out the different classes. You will be given a generic build for the class and you can switch it up as you like. If you don't want to boost this character that you just tried, simply use the booster again and you can reset the character to whatever level you were before and then boost another character for a trial run. PvE has six main things that you can do. You have meta events like Dragonfall, Drizzlewood Coast and Silver Wastes. And then we have dungeons. Dungeons can be identified by the gate icon that you can see on the map right here. If you don't want to do dungeons, then you can try out fractals. You will find fractals here at the Fort Mariner's waypoint in Lion's Arch. Simply just step up to this gate and you will have access to the menu. If fractals still wasn't your thing, you can try out raids. Just like dungeons, raids are scattered all over the map. But there's a raid hub or a raid central or a lobby in Lion's Arch. The raid lobby can be found here just below where the fractals are found. Finally, we have strike missions and the now newly added dragon response missions, which both can be found here in the Eye of the North. 
you just need to run up to this gate, just like with the fractals. And when you stand here, you can choose between strike missions and dragon response missions. Then just pick what you like and find a group and have fun. Try all the game modes, everything from open world to the raids. But if you are someone who really likes to kill other players and dominate the PvP arena, then threat not. As soon as you have completed the tutorial for your class, you can instantly gain access to the PvP and artificially boost your level to 80 and access all of the builds and gear that you will need. Here you will learn Tomes of Knowledge, which actually level up your character. So if you're tired of PvP, you can go out into the world as a level 80 character. Finally, there's World vs. World. This can only be accessed when you are level 80, and here you will need to fight other servers for Dominion of the Mists. There will be three servers fighting for the maps, where Zergs of dozens of players will clash and fight for power. So if you're not on the same server as your friends, you will not be able to fight in the World vs. World with them. So now that you have tried bits and pieces of the game and the different game modes, let's move on to item number three. Set a goal. Even if you're a brand new player, or if you have been away for a few months or maybe even years, it doesn't really matter. The thing is, something has made you install the game. And you might be thinking, oh, I wanted to get a full legendary armor set, or I want a sky scale, or I want a chack infusion, I want thousands of gold and be a baron. All of those are good goals. But those are long goals, and it will take you literal weeks of play hours to achieve this. But I mean set a goal. I mean for example, try to get through one episode of new content a day. This might be in the Heart of Thorns or the Path of Fire expansions or any of the Living World seasons. They all have great benefits when you do them. And if you're the kind of player who's super into the story, then you could do them chronologically from start to finish. But I still highly recommend doing the first episode of Path of Fire to get the Raptor Mount. That way you can walk a bit faster. And then you can go back and do the rest of the story. Another goal could be gear. Let's say you need Ascended gear, which is one tier higher than Exotic if you're a returning player. Ask your guildmates or Google what kind of stat set you would need for your build. And then try to craft one thing a day for the piece that you need. And I don't mean the whole piece of the Ascended. I mean one thing in the recipe for the piece. Let's say you have ascended gear, but you want to get a legendary weapon finally after all these years. Don't try to craft it all in one day or a week. Try to get bits and pieces of the recipes slowly and casually. By playing the game, you will get almost all of the ingredients for the recipes without even stressing about it. Or if you're in a rush and you need gold, well, I got a video for that, and I'll put it at the back in the end screen thing, so you can click it. It's seven things that I like to do that make gold. Anyway, let's move on to item number four. GAMBLE! No, I'm just kidding. Don't gamble. The fourth thing is to explore. Guild Wars 2 is a beautiful game, full of fascinating zones and intriguing landscapes. Don't fuss too much about only doing grinds for certain items, but try to explore as well. It's also quite amazing to see all the different lands and all the different people in Guild Wars 2. And a big bonus to exploring the maps and getting all the waypoints and points of interest and the vistas is that you get 100% map completion. If you get 100% map completion of Corteria maps, which are all the ones before the expansions, you will get two gifts of exploration, which you will need to craft Generation 1 legendaries. If you did map completion on the expansions, you will either get a gift of Maguma Mastery or a gift of Desert Mastery, which are used in Generation 2 Legendary Weapons. So I guess the point is, explore all the maps, try everything out. And that takes me to the last thing on my list. And I see way too many people do this wrong. Item number 5. Have fun. It's kind of self-explanatory. But all of the other points that I talked about are useless if you're not having fun. Games are meant to be enjoyed. And if it feels like you're only logging in to do chores because you have to, then you need to reconsider your playstyle. I have hours and hours of game time where I've done exploration, fought many battles in PvP, surged around the World vs. World. And I still, to this day, have only tried one raid and one strike mission. So I guess what I'm saying is that if, if you feel like you're running out of content to play, then perhaps you haven't looked in the right places. I mean, come on. We have people who literally play the trading post. They do nothing else but trade. Well, I hope you got something useful from this video. 
If you did or if you didn't, let me know in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one.